Hey everyone, my name is Perry, and in this video, we're going to watch Dr. Stone Season 4, Episode 9 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this anime really are. <laughs> This is what engineering school felt like every single day. And uh, Luda, please don't feel bad. This is, I, I get it, I've been there. The professors were at the university for research, not to teach the students. They're teaching because they have no other choice. Most of us didn't ask questions in class, not because we understood everything. We were, in fact, so lost that we didn't even know what questions to ask. Most of engineering school is teaching yourself. How I got through it was with a group of friends. You gotta get some people that you can trust together, take the same classes together, study with each other, and learn from one another. A particular topic might make no sense to you, and yet it could be crystal clear to another person in the group. I remember this one class that we had to take, ECE 366 at Michigan State University, Signals. My goodness, that class was rough. And the professor was actually helpful. It, it was just that the concepts were so complex. Nobody in my friend group understood any of it except for Steven. Thank goodness for that too, because we're like, guess what, Steven? We're gonna need you to teach the rest of us, buddy, because we don't know what the heck is going on. Any student in engineering, medicine, or law will tell you this. Getting through it alone is very, very difficult. Having that trusted group of friends was, was such a blessing. I don't know how people are getting through this solo. ウエスギ暗号だ。戦国時代の武将、ウエスギ謙信が使ってた暗号で、仕組みはすごい単純だよ。色派表に対応した数字を読み上げて言葉を伝えるんだ。ドクターゼノがいくらちゃんとしていても this is going to be effective, though only in the short term, which is exactly what they need right now. What makes this style of encryption inferior to digital is because every code is set in place to always correspond with the same message. The enemy might not know what 736455 represent. Okio is right though, they will figure it out, because every time the enemy hears 7-3, it always means the same thing, corresponding the code to the action. In engineering terms, it's frequency analysis completed using Fourier transforms or other forms of signal analysis. One of the advantages to this is that you can just change the paper. So whenever the enemy understands 7-3 means, okay, advance north, then you switch that code. So the next time they hear 7-3, they'll think, oh, it means head north, but the reality is you change the cipher. This will work, but it's only in the short term, because any anyone that has the technology that Dr. Zeno has, they will figure this out. This is not a, a very complex code to break. Digital encryptions are different because the message is randomly scrambled before being sent and unscrambled upon being received. The various types we discussed in the previous video, I'll upload a short form of it to correspond here. For those of you who watch all the Dr. Stone videos, I don't want to bore you by repeating the same thing ad nauseum. Speaking of the last video, how is it so many of you think I'm five foot eight? That there's that number showed up so often in the comment section. I didn't know I, this is a weird statement. I didn't know I sounded that short. It's a very odd thing to say, but you guys know what I mean. I'm six feet tall. Digital encryption can still be hacked. It is just a whole lot harder to do. This is the old school way of triangulating a position. That, that's super cool. First, you measure a known distance. Shooting the arrow from a fixed spot, a skilled archer can give you the x axis of the parabolic motion. This distance forms the base of your imaginary triangle. Then, take measurements of the angles using a sextant. These angles are like secret clues that when combined with your known length, lets you form a perfect triangle in your mind. Now the trigonometry kicks in. Using the known baseline and the two angles, you solve the triangle, calculating the unknown distance from origin to destination. It, it's like piecing together a geometric puzzle. It, it, it's really, really cool. This is, in my opinion, the fun part of trigonometry. There's a not so fun part too. 
What was taught to us for these situations is Soka Toa, which is S-O-H, C-A-H, and then T-O-A. As shown here, sine is opposite and hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent and hypotenuse, and then finally tangent is opposite and the adjacent side. Triangles are a very interesting shape. They come in multiple variations, which is very odd, and they can be used for an endless number of possibilities. The most famous use of triangles is likely from 500 BC. Legend has it that while studying right angle triangles, this gentleman noticed something extraordinary. If you built a square on each of the triangle's three sides, the square on the longest side, the hypotenuse, always had an area equal to the combined areas of the other two squares. This equation is as famous as E equals MC squared. In our case, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, named after the Greek gentleman Pythagoras.